Buckets are also useful for categorizing data. If I go look at my salary column from my employees table in the HR schema, yes, I can order it to get an idea of what the salary distribution is. But typically, if I'm going into a management meeting, they'll be wanting one of those trendy little Excel spreadsheets with a nice graph, etc., showing me the histogram. I'm graphing the number of employees that have a particular salary within a common range, in this case, $5,000 the width of every bar is the same. So I'm building a width-based histogram. We can do this directly within SQL. We have a function that, as the name suggests, if I'm building a width-based histogram, I can use the width bucket function. The function takes four parameters, the expression to be measured, in this case salary, the lowest value, the starting point for a bucket, in this case zero, the highest point for a bucket, 25,000, and then the number of buckets I choose to break that data into. Thus, in this case, I'll be asking for five buckets, each of size $5,000, spread between zero and 25,000. I run that and I get a numeric result between one and five, indicating the bucket number for each salary in the employee's table. To convert that into my histogram data, all I need to do is do a group by on that width bucket result. So I'll do a width bucket function now with the count star from the employer's table and group by that width bucket. And now we can see that we have the count of each employee that falls into those ranges of $5,000 ranging from zero to 25,000. Out of the box, width bucket isn't going to give me those starting and ending values for each of the buckets we're defining. But given that we know the size of each bucket is 5,000 being the maximum 25,000 minus the minimum zero divided by five, the number of buckets, we can easily do some simple mathematics to come up with the low value and high value for each bucket into which a salary might fall into. Now we have all the information we need to plot our Excel graph. One outstanding question is, what about a value of a salary that lies right on a bucket boundary? Which bucket will it fall into? We can easily test that out by doing a single row select from Joule. I'll pick one of the boundary values, in this case 5,000, and apply it to the width bucket function. And as you can see, it ends up being in the upper bucket. Armed with this information, now I can make a slight adjustment to my original query, which gave me the bucket upper and lower limits. Now I'm going to take one off the upper limit, which gives me that nice mutually exclusive list of bucket ranges. In this case, each bucket now terminates just before the 5,000 range mark. Things were fairly easy for me here because I knew in advance what the lowest and highest salaries were in the HR employees table, and I knew that going from zero to 25,000 was going to cover all opportunities. What if I didn't know that? What if I picked values of say 4,000 and 24,000? What happens then when I do my width bucket function? As we can see, we end up with two extra buckets. If I asked for a number of buckets of n, I could end up with possibly n plus two buckets. One bucket will be labeled zero for any value that falls below the minimum value I've specified, and one bucket will be labeled one above the highest number of buckets I've nominated, in this case, a bucket of six. That is for any values that are above the high value I've nominated in the width bucket function. If I don't know in advance what the low and high extrema are, I could fold that into my original query. In this case, I'll use a with function and define a common table expression called extrema. I'm using trunk here with a minus three to round to the nearest 1000. So in this case, I'll round the minimum salary down to the nearest 1000. I'll round the highest salary up to the next 1000 to get my minimum and maximum values as input to my width buffet function. Now I plug that into my histogram common table expression using MI and MX. I'm still keeping five buckets. Because my minimum and maximum now are in multiples of 1,000 rather than 5,000, I have a bit more of a granular result, but still a similar histogram distribution comes out here. Of course, it's not always about having a width-based histogram. Sometimes we want to have the same number of values in each bucket.
This is called a height balanced histogram. Width bucket is not appropriate here, but we do have a analytic function which will do the job. The end tile function, you may be familiar with the term quartiles and deciles, end tile is just a abstraction of that, allows you to pass in a value of how many tiles you would like, in this case I'm choosing five, and this will create an even split of values. That is, the bucket assigned will have the same number of values in across the entire set. I can prove this with a simple group by. I'll grab my even split column and I'll do a count star. And as you can see, there is the same number of values in each bucket. Each bucket has 20% of the data because I've used an end tile of five, therefore giving 100 divided by five being 20%. So whether you want width balanced histograms or height balanced histograms, there are functions available in the Oracle database to make this an easy task.